Now, here's a question for you. What makes a truly great driver's car? Is it the pin sharp steering, the perfectly weighted pedals, the satisfyingly crisp gear shift? All of these are very important ingredients, but for me, it's all about feeling the road. Every bump, every line of paint, the texture of the tarmac. And by that measure, this BMW has to be one of the very best driver's cars ever made, because what better way of feeling the road than actually feeling the road. Yep, definitely tarmac. Bitumen aggregate, if I'm not mistaken. Classic surface. This, of course, is the Z1, the very first of BMW Z cars. A two-seater roadster with a retractable soft top and a traditional front-engined rear drive layout. But that was where the tradition stopped. And that's because the Z1 was actually one of the most forward-facing cars ever made. I mean, let's start with these doors. Car designers have come up with all sorts of door designs over the years. Gullwing doors, scissor doors, suicide doors, sliding doors, even dihedral doors. But drop-down doors? No one had ever thought of that. The idea, apart from making it easier to get in and out, was to make you feel even more connected to the world outside. Now you could have the wind in your hair and the wind in your armpits. That'll dry them out. As one magazine put it, the Z1 driver could, and I quote, pluck sweet clover and other ground-hugging greenery from the wayside by simply leaning out. I mean, what other car lets you forage while you drive? Genius. So how did the Z1 come to be? Well, it all started back in 1985 when BMW set up a sort of special ops department where engineers and designers could let their imagination run wild. Just six months later, they revealed their first creation, a rolling demo for pioneering tech, new materials and clever construction methods. It was essentially a concept car in the shape of the Z1. Two years later, it would go on sale. And while it wasn't exactly space age, it was definitely more sci-fi than anything else you could buy in 1988. That Z, by the way, stands for Zukunft, or future. A future in which, according to this BMW advert, we would drive through virtual worlds wearing his and hers boiler suits, flying goggles, and flappy white hats. Yeah, I've no idea either. But let's forget the party tricks and cosplay for a minute. What's the Z1 actually like to drive? Well, underneath all this, the Z1 is largely a 325i, which means it's got a 2.5 litre straight six engine producing around 170 horsepower and 168 pounds-feet of torque. Nought to 62 takes just under eight seconds and top whack is 140 miles an hour. Not exactly mind-blowing, and only just acceptable in the 80s. It could have handled more power, for sure. Here's a tip. I wouldn't drive at anything over 50 miles an hour if you've got the doors down, especially if you're wearing a skirt, because it can get all a bit gale force down here. On the plus side, 50 miles an hour feels more like 80 with all the road rushing past. So, what about this engine? Well, it's super, super smooth, and it sounds absolutely cracking at high revs. So it's a shame that they've limited it to six and a half thousand RPM. This gearbox, well, it's quite long gearing and it weighs a fair bit, this car, 1,250 kilograms. So all in, the Z1 could do with a little less pork and a bit more poke. Inside, there's certainly not much to distract you from the road. A few dials, some heater controls, a tape deck. Oh, and the doors. Did I mention the doors? While the doors stole the show, there was actually all sorts of mad invention going on with the Z1. Take the bodywork, for example, which was made from what BMW called an elastic synthetic material, or plastic panels to you and me. It made perfect sense. Plastic is light, plastic doesn't rust, and best of all, it's bendy, so virtually impossible to damage as demonstrated by one BMW exec who, in front of the world's media, jumped with both feet onto one of the panels, which promptly buckled and then sprang back into its original shape once he stepped off again. There were other advantages too. Border the colour? Not a problem. 
With a spare set of panels, you could, said BMW, convert a Z1 from red to blue in the space of an hour using nothing more than a screwdriver. And then there was the way it looked. With its short overhangs and wedgy silhouette, it was a world away from the elegant shapes of classic roadsters. And look at this. Because the floor is sort of a plastic sandwich, the underbody is completely flat and the rear silencer acts as a sort of underbody wing. Combined with the swept windscreen and this streamlined body, the Z1 is very low drag. There was, however, a slight problem. The Z1 cost about £37,000 or around £77,000 in today's money. In fact, mint condition cards are still selling for 40, 50 grand today. That's second-hand 911 money. And there was more. This allegedly easy to make car wasn't actually very easy to make. Those flexi panels, for example, had three levels of bendability, each requiring a different type of paint. They literally had to change the chemical composition for different parts of the car. And so, just three years after going on sale, BMW kiboshed the Z1. Just 8,000 cars were made, and only 1,500 of those made a life outside of Germany. Of course, the Z line continued. Next came the Z3, several generations of the Z4, and James Bond Z8, but none were quite as inventive as the original with their boring hinge doors and sheet metal. The BMW Z1 then wasn't quite the game changer BMW was hoping for. Maybe it was just too far ahead of its time. And you know what? I think I know the feeling. <laughs>